Hey everyone, this is Eric Bond, the founder of Beat the GMAT, and welcome to today's Write Like an Expert series session where we're analyzing the Stanford Graduate School of Business essays uh, for the 2012 and 2013 admission season. So for those of you who don't know, this uh, Write Like an Expert series is an annual uh, series that we put on for the Beat the GMAT community where we ask top MBA admissions experts to join us for a live video session uh, where they break down each question for um, a top business school uh, one by one. So for today's session, uh, we're delighted to be co-hosting um, with Admit Advantage. Uh, Admit Advantage is one of the top NBA admissions consulting firms, uh, if you haven't heard of them before. I highly recommend that you visit admitadvantage.com and check out their services and their resources. And uh, you'll find that they have a consistent track record of getting their clients into the top business schools like Harvard Business School, Wharton, and of course, Stanford Graduate School of Business. Uh, for today's session, uh, the co-founder of Admit Advantage, Eric Allen, will be leading uh, this Write Like an Expert analysis for the Stanford Essays. Uh, a little bit about Eric. So he uh, has an amazing pedigree. He went to Brown for his undergraduate, uh, has a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering there. Uh, and was a and is a Wharton MBA graduate, uh, where he graduated with honors. Before co-founding Admin Advantage, Eric worked in a variety of uh, industries and leadership positions, including as a consultant, um, a corporate leader at GE, as well as an entrepreneur. So um, before I hand it over to Eric, just one word about uh, the format for today's structure. So Eric is going to go through his presentation, breaking down this year's Stanford essays in 2012 and 2013. And uh, for the remaining time in this hour um, after his presentation, we're gonna take your questions live. So uh, stick around, be sure to ask your questions on the MBA Watch comment wall for the Stanford Graduate School of Business. And uh, we'll have a moderated chat to follow uh, where Eric will answer your questions live about Stanford's essays. Uh, so that being said, Eric, please, uh, the floor is yours. Great, thanks, Eric. Really appreciate uh, you uh, with that nice introduction. Um, we're here today for the Stanford GSB application review. This is part of the Write Like an Expert series. Uh, my name is Eric Allen. Proud to uh, to be here with you to talk about Stanford. Um, a little bit about my background. Uh, I have an undergraduate degree from Brown University. I was a chemical engineer. I uh, worked in consulting for some time, and um, then I started a company in pharmaceutical software. After that, uh, I sold the company and decided I need to go to business school. I actually uh, was interested in Stanford, but my wife overruled me on that one, so uh, no West Coast schools for me. But uh, I did end up going to Wharton and, um, and, and met ultimately the co-founders of Admin Advantage at the Wharton School of Business, and I've been doing this since 2004. Looking forward to taking you through a little bit about uh, our take on Stanford. I have my Stanford hat on today. So uh, I'm, I'm excited and ready to go. A little bit about Admin Advantage. You know, we've seen the business, as I mentioned, we've been around since 2004. You know, we've seen the business change quite a bit, you know, from a couple of years ago, really where we saw SAs peak in terms of overall size. Um, we're seeing a, a seed change really in, in the application space where a lot of the applications, a lot of the essays are actually condensing. So um, folks are really need to drive home the differentiation factor. They need to really think uh, critically about their backgrounds, what they're interested in, and why they want to go to business school. And that's one of the reasons that, that we are around to help people think about their differentiation, think about how they can get into school and putting the, the best um, application together. When you think about the admissions process, say 70, 75% of the people are actually admissible to top schools like Stanford meaning they have the grades, they have the requisite experience, uh, they've, they've shown leadership. Um, but what takes the people, the 75% of the pool down to sub 10% in terms of acceptance rate is really all about how you differentiate yourself, um, how you talk about the story and show the admissions committee um, that you've demonstrated leadership in the past. That's what we do. We're a full service admissions company helping you through the admissions process from thinking about strategy, to schools, all the way through the nuts and bolts of the application process, uh, essays, interview, uh, resume, recommenders, et cetera. Um, all through that process is, is really what we do. 
Um, and you know, we, we do it because we focus on you. Before we even look at an application, you know, we want to understand from your perspective, how do you differentiate yourself? How have you shown impact? How have you exhibited yourself as a future business leader? That's really what we want to focus on. So through that proven process, um, you know, we're able to help you differentiate yourself from your peers uh, applying to these schools. In addition, we spend quite a bit of time on the hiring process, the screening process, and the training process for our consultants. All of our consultants have graduated from top 10 MBA programs. Many of them, like myself, have been on admissions committees. Um, and you know, we help, you know, we provide them the resources they need to be successful. And uh, we make sure that you know, our process is followed, training is up to date, and uh, that ultimately uh, reduces the variability in outcomes for our clients. And as you can see there at the bottom of the slide, um, you know, we, we have proven success. We, we have helped clients get into schools, all the top schools around the world. Now let's get into the meat of, uh, of Stanford, the application piece. So I always like to think, um, you know, when I start off with an application, I want to talk to you a little bit about what the school means to you, because I think that's one of the most important factors when you're thinking about an application. So many people come to us and say, hey, I want to go to you know, Harvard or Stanford, Warden, and Columbia. And I say, well, where's the tie there? Oh, well, they're all top you know, five schools, which they are, um, but they're very different schools. So um, you need to think about Stanford in the context of what is it that Stanford brings to the table specifically for you, and why is it a good fit for you? Because if you don't, that's going to come through in the application, and ultimately that could be one of the differentiating factors um, so when you think about Stanford, what it means to me, entrepreneurship. Uh, obviously, a number of entrepreneurs have come out of Stanford GSB. Uh, they're constantly looking for people who can think outside the box. Entrepreneurship is one of those uh, professions where you know, you're constantly being challenged about innovating, driving, driving uh, new business, new ideas. Innovation, another one of those words. Um, you know, Stanford's looking for people who can innovate, who can think think outside the box, who are, who are constantly challenged. Thought leadership is part of that. Um, but not just in the context of thinking of new ideas, but what about making an impact? Uh, Stanford is, is very much so, you'll, look, you'll see it in the essays um, shortly, they're interested in how have you actually made an impact uh, in your job, in the community, et cetera. The Knight Center, I, I had a, an opportunity to visit Stanford's campus last year um, with some other admissions consultants. Um, and the Knight Center is, is beautiful. It's truly a beautiful campus, state of the art. All of the actual facilities are very close, um, which really lends itself well to generating those types of discussions that support uh, entrepreneurship and innovation and, and such. Small classes, uh, you know, when you, when you think about a lot of the other top 10 and global MBA programs, many of them are much larger programs. Stanford, not so much. Um, so they're looking for people who are going to be a good fit for Stanford, who are very interested in Stanford, um, knowing that every person counts that much more because the classes are so small. And finally, Silicon Valley. You know, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Silicon Valley, feeding into some of the other things that we've talked about on this slide, entrepreneurship, innovation, et cetera. Uh, having Silicon Valley there is really just, it's a, it's a breeding ground for entrepreneurship um, and really a lot of opportunities for folks to get out there in front of, of, of capital and, uh, and also just, just be around uh, people who have a lot of ideas and, and a driving impact. So as we talk about, you know, Stanford is, is all about building great leaders, right? So, um, you know, what you're going to learn at, at this in the program is there's going to be quite a bit on personal leadership development. So you can kind of see a tie into the essays where they want you to be a self-aware person. They want, to, they want you to understand your personal leadership style, your strengths and weaknesses, the things as a business leader that you need to know about yourself to be successful. Uh, so that's definitely a focus of theirs. They also want to make sure that not only do you have the analytical skills, um, that's really a prerequisite for any business school program, but they want to make sure that you're able to communicate, that you're able to persuade others. That's really part of being uh, the type of leader that Stanford's looking for. Finally, we talked about creativity and innovation. Very important for the Stanford School uh, Graduate School of Business um, that they see that, that they see that exhibited in your past. A lot of people will come to us and say, yeah, Eric, you know, 
Um, I, I've worked for a large company. I've never really had an opportunity to, to innovate, to show my creativity. I would challenge you to say that there are a lot of opportunities to show that. Um, I call it entrepreneurship when you're working for a larger company and you don't have an opportunity to be an entrepreneur necessarily, but you do have an entrepreneur to, to think bigger, to think differently, to challenge the status quo. If you're one of those people, Stanford's looking for you. They want to see the kind of person that's going to think outside the box. They want to see the kind of person that's going to be innovative, uh, thoughtful, and open, open-minded open leader that ultimately leads to impact in the business world. Applicant expectations. So, um, you know, many of these are the same uh, for, for a lot of top business schools, but, you know, they want to see demonstrated leadership. Uh, it's not enough to just talk about leadership. Yeah, I'm a leader, and very involved and leader and, uh, you know, it's great. Anyone can say leader, congratulations. Um, you know, you and all of the other folks applying can do that. What's important is that you need to demonstrate leadership. So you need to talk about your experiences being a leader. Um, and it's not being a manager necessarily. You don't have to be a manager to be a leader. I think that's a misconception. It's about being a leader. It's about leading up if you're not a manager. It's about leading around and influencing others. Um, and it's about doing it with a set of core beliefs and integrity that uh, goes uncompromised. And, and really being able to, to articulate that to the admissions committee is important. Um, so that's, that's certainly one area of focus for Stanford. The next is just intellectual capacity, you know, and, and your focus on learning. You know, what kinds of things have you done historically? Have you taken classes? Have you, um, you know, uh, gone and gotten your CPA or a CFA? additional coursework? Um, have you taken initiative within your, within your job to go and learn a new skill? Or were you at the top of the world at your job but you decided to change because you wanted to um, have a new challenge? Those are the kinds of things that they're going to be looking for um, you know, when, when we talk about intellectual vitality. Personal qualities and contributions. So some of the things here, again, um, you know, very similar to other business schools, but Global experience and perspective. Stanford's a very global program. Uh, they would like people who have that type of perspective. You don't have to travel the world. You don't have to live abroad right now. But you know, think about how the work that you do on a daily basis has a global impact. And what are the kinds of things that you do um, that give you a different perspective? Um, even if it's a domestic perspective, or perhaps a different domestic perspective. They're looking for diversity of thought. Even more important, when you think about the small class size, every person's that important, right? You know, you're really trying to build a class. You know, I like to say in a, a larger program, I don't want to say there are throwaways, but there are certainly opportunities to say, okay, you know, this person might have a similar background to some other ones, but they're very strong. I think they'd be a great candidate. Um, at Stanford, it's, it's really, you know, every person counts. They really need to get uh, diversity of thought. They really want your voice. They want to have you bring something to the table that's a little bit different. And I love the mantra they have, you know, doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. Um, surprisingly, that's, that's a lot of what business is all about. You know, th there is a lot of innovation in business, but sometimes it's just about execution. So when you're, when you're thinking about your application, um, a couple things to note. Interviews are by invitation only. Um, they're primarily by alums. A blind interview, so they, they tend to have your resume and not really your application, uh, and, and they don't uh, they don't give you much much feedback. Uh, they don't give you any feedback, in fact, if uh, things don't go well. But the good thing is we do, so uh, so you can always ask us, and, and and we'll give you an assessment. Recommenders, I want to pause here for a second because recommenders are very important in Stanford's application process. Uh, when we were on campus last year and had a chance to talk to admissions reps uh, on Stanford. And they talked a lot about um, the importance of recommendations. The reason why they believe it's important is because it's really one of the few areas where they gain a true third-party look at who you are. And when you look at the structure of the, of the recommendations, three recommendations, most schools only have two. They also have a peer um, recommendation. Most schools do not have that. Um, so, you know, I call it kind of a bachelor rule, right? So... I'm ashamed to say that I actually watched The Bachelor. My wife forces me to do it. Um, but the, the Bachelor rule is essentially, um, you know, in front of The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, you know, certain 
um, you know, the, the, the woman or the guys or, or whatever the case may be will act a certain way and behind the scenes, you know, the claws come out, right? So you see, you know, to the peers, um, to the other candidates in The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, for those of you who don't know, basically you have a guy or a gal who's competing or, or who's um, trying to decide who the perfect, um, you know, um, potential future wife or husband would be. And they basically go through every week and they eliminate, you know, a couple of women or men and they give them roses based on the dates that they've had, et cetera. So really cool. If you haven't checked it out, go on YouTube and do that. But it's really the bachelor rule. You know, it's great to be to be good in front of your boss, but you know, are you a jerk to your peers or are you disrespectful to your peers and don't have a good recommendation? So it's kind of getting a view from a couple different angles for Stanford. But it's really important, so we ask that you prepare your recommenders. Get them ready. Talk to them about your brand. Talk to them about what you want them to focus on. And um, that will really help you in your, in your Stanford uh, application. So now we'll get into the meat of, of Stanford, which are the essays. Um, before you start writing, again, this is a, an admin advantage um, process note, but it's very important. Um, before you start writing, you need to think about your brand. You need to think about what it is that makes you different, right? Um, you know, if you're McDonald's, it's speed to market, it's consistency, it's cleanliness. What is your brand? Um, you know, maybe it's innovation, maybe it's uh, creativity, maybe it's your analytical skills, maybe it's your ability to motivate others or bring others together. Uh, but those stories are um, just, just. A marginal if you can only mention them and, and talk about them they're really really drive home uh, the importance uh, of those points when you have stories behind them <clears throat> so for instance for me uh, I was a cancer survivor so you know I talked about my resilience my ability to come back you know in college and play football again despite my illness and the treatments and things like that that was important for me I talked about my analytical skills I talked about my ability to motivate others. Uh, I was on a board that was somewhat dysfunctional and I was able to kind of move things along. But what is it that's important to you? That's what you need to think about, the, the character traits from your professional, community, and personal life that make you who you are. Don't try to be what Stanford wants you to be. Don't fit innovation and creativity in. If you haven't really exhibited innovation and creativity, it's okay. Be the best you you can be. Um, be true to yourself. So, you know, the other thing is you want to sell the dream, okay? So paint a clear picture of who you are and where you want to be. Bridge the gap to where you are today to where you want to be. And use those words wisely. You have 1,600 words total in your essays. Make sure you use those words wisely. Don't come in overconfident if you're a 780 GMAT or an 800 GMAT. Or don't, don't be too distraught if you're, you know, a, a six. 50 GMAT or so, you know, the, the range for Stanford was in the fives up into the sevens, high sevens, right? So um, you shouldn't be very confident if you have a 580, but, um, you know, if you have the, the rest of the application um, to support a low GMAT score and that's your really only one hole, you certainly have a chance, so give it a shot. Essay number one, the largest essay here, 750 words. What matters to you most and why? Okay. You're out there, you're an MBA, you're thinking, really? Do I really have to think about this? Why can't I just talk about, you know, um, you know why I want to go to business school, uh, you know, a standard essay, just, you know, give me three um, strengths, or I'll give, you, I'll give you as many weaknesses as you want. I can do that, but do I really need to think about what matters most to me? You absolutely do. Going back to Stanford, we talked about it, what they're all about, they're about fit. They want to understand who you are. They want to understand your characteristics. I think about this as a, as a law personal statement. It's kind of a, you know, who are you? What matters to you and why does it matter to you? Right, that's gonna give Stanford some insight into who you are as a business leader, how you've grown up, what your value system is. Um, you can talk about multiple things. You don't just have to talk about business or personal or community. Um, I, I really like to think about this essay as, um, you know, what gets you up in the morning and what keeps you up at night? You know, obviously for me, you know, this company is, is, you know, what gets me up in the morning and certainly what keeps me up at night, right? So you know, that's certainly something that matters to me. My family is something that matters to me. And, and I can talk about 
historically why that's important to me and why I think that's, that's something that uh, is worth writing about in my business school application. Um, but the, the most important thing here is don't try to be someone else. Uh, whether you work with us or not, don't let an admissions consulting company dictate this essay for you. It'll be dry. It won't come off as you. It won't give your swagger, your personality. That's very important. Um, and that's, that's, that is probably one of the most important things in this actual essay is to think about, you know, what are the, what are the key values, the key metrics that you want to get across um, and support those by why? Why did that happen? How did that progress? So they can get some insight into who you are as a person um, and tie it into the business side. Remember, this is an MBA application. So it's not just about, hey, these are the things that matter to me, like, you know, Ravens football for me, go Ravens. Um, Ravens football matters to me, but I don't know that that's something that I necessarily want to talk about in this essay. Um, so think about it in the context of your brand, as we talked about, those character traits, the things that um, you want to bring to the table, to the forefront of the discussion, and then you can bring out those particular points in this essay as well. Essay number two, what do you want to do really and why Stanford? So I get this question all the time. Do they really want to know what I want to do really? Um, yeah, they do. They want to understand who you are and what you want to be. And they want to understand in the context of how Stanford helps you do that. Um, they want to understand your passion. And one thing I can tell you in, in going around campus and talking to students and talking to alums, I know quite a few of them, my friends who went to Stanford, um, you know, they, they're passionate usually about something. Um, and so, you know, they want to understand your passion. They really want to understand, you know, what makes you tick, uh, what you're trying to do with your life, um, and how Stanford GSB is really going to help you get there. This is a perfect opportunity if you're a career changer um, to talk about, hey, this is where I've been, this is what I want to do, and this is how Stanford's going to support me in that. I mean, it's, it's, it's the perfect question for someone like you. Um, you know, so think about it in the context of what do you want to do, short-term and long-term goal, how does Stanford help you achieve that, and how does an MBA help you achieve that? Okay, but don't be just so broad about, hey, an MBA is going to help me do this because of X, Y, and Z. You want to make sure you talk about the specifics of Stanford. Um, and then, you know, dream big. You know, we get a lot of clients, especially career changers, who may not be used to kind of the business side of things, and you may, uh, especially engineers. I'm an engineer, so I can say that I'm a chemi. Um, but, you know, they come in and they'll say, oh, I'd like to lead a division. Uh, well, Stanford has a certain number of people that they have for their, their overall um, pool of candidates each year. Um, the people that just want to lead divisions will probably be out of that um, pool. Now, um, you know, people will argue with me about this, but in my opinion, you don't go to Stanford to to you know report to people necessarily. You want to dream big. You want to think big. If you want to go and work for a corporation, that's fine. And you want to go and be you know uh, work in marketing. Well, let's hope that your aspirations um, are sufficiently um, you know, sufficiently, you're, hopefully you're sufficiently aspirational within whatever context that you're trying to go into to be able to, um, to show the admissions committee that, you know, you're trying to be a business leader and not just a, met, a contributor to business. That's what it's all about. That's what business school is all about. All right, essay number three, you have an opportunity to pick one of the next three. Um, so we'll take, we'll take you through each of these, each of them are 400 words, each of them they ask for relevant stories. So within the last three years, they'd like to understand, you know, what are the things that you've done within the context of the last three years? I always tell clients to look at the overall set of essays, look at your brand, determine what you've been able to articulate so far, and then find out what are the things that you may want to also talk about and what's the best essay to fit that into. So the first one is, talk about a time when you built and developed a team whose performance exceeded expectations. Um, so, you know, this is really talking about impact, right? Um, talk about the team, provide the context of the story, uh, you know, uh, why, you know, what were the expectations? How were how you able to help them exceed expectations? 
clients often get into trouble when they just talk about the team accomplishments. We were able to do X, Y, and Z. It was great. Um, this is what we accomplished, et cetera. That's all well and good if the entire team were applying to Stanford, but it's not the entire team. It's you. So you need to talk about your specific role. What did you do to really make the team better? Um, what did you do to, to leave your mark on the team so that you all were enabled to exceed the expectations? Um, you know, also think about it you know, a year or two later and think about what things did you put in place that make an impact today? You know, were you, you know, working on a, a new deal workout to, make, to improve the overall process and now you've actually improved the process so much that you end up saving, you know, two million a year. You know, it'd be great to quantify something like that. Um, it's okay, you know, if you're talking about this story and you're not the manager or the leader of this team. But again, make sure you focus on what you specifically did to make sure that the team exceeded the expectations of the overall team. Again, um, you know, a similar type thing, you know, tell us about a time when you identified and pursued an opportunity to improve an organization. This gets back to what we talked about with Stanford, you know, the upstream swimming, um, the, the uh, finding the opportunity to motivate others, being creative. So, you know, you want to find a lot of times this will happen when uh, maybe someone just changed careers, they have a fresh new look. Uh, maybe a lot of times in nonprofit, you'll get a, a fair number of stories in this space. Um, or maybe you change your role or change your division. Um, and so there's, there's, it's really, where was an opportunity where you proactively identified a way to make things better? Another story about impact. There's a problem without being told, hopefully, you were able to go in and improve that problem. Talk about, you know, just like the last essay, set the stage, provide the context, identify the opportunity, outline the legacy. What did you actually do to improve um, the organization? And how has that legacy made an impact for years to come, hopefully? Doesn't have to be professional. Doesn't have to be professional. It could be community. It could be something maybe you did on a personal side, depending on the context. Um, make sure you provide you know, what, what were the results? Were you rewarded for it? Um, you know, are there specific numbers that you can speak to? And the last one, again, tying into the importance of recommenders. It's really important. If this is something that one of your recommenders witnessed, and that goes for uh, 3A as well, you definitely want to make sure that you stress to them to bring that out in the recommendation. It's third-party verification of a story that you're including in your essay. What is better than that? Obviously, they're going to bring their take on it, but you need to identify that as, hey, I'm going to talk about this in one of my essays. It'd be great for you to provide your perspective on the impact I made to the organization. Finally, tell us about a time when you went beyond what was defined or established. So, um, you know, this is another opportunity for you to kind of show them your ability to kind of think differently. That's what Stanford's all about, innovation, creativity. Two main ways to go, there are others. Um, you know, exceeding expectations. You went beyond what was defined or established. You did something else um, and it turned out to, to make a positive impact. Or you just went a completely different direction. Um, you know, maybe there was a certain standard here and you said, this is not good enough for our company. We need to do better. Um, you know, a lot of opportunities to proactively identify, um, you know, an opportunity. An opportunity to do better for the organization and to make a real impact. Um, you know, Talk about why it was important that you did that, okay? Again, Stanford wants to understand what makes you tick. So if you can talk a little bit about um, why it was that you chose to make that impact or you chose to go beyond or in a different direction is just as important in some cases as what you actually did. Um, and then provide the context again of what was that impact? How did it exceed expectations? How did others react to those expectations or to that, to that performance? Um, and what has been your legacy? So very similar themes, different questions, but similar themes in terms of how you, you, you attack these essays. Optional essay, as you uh, can imagine, very similar to a lot of other uh, optional essays, any other information that's not captured elsewhere. There's the key, not captured elsewhere. Um, this could be a plug essay, filling gaps in your application you weren't able to talk about. Um, 
Uh, you can proactively talk about positive things that maybe you weren't able to incorporate. Be careful about this. Um, really think long and hard about your ability to incorporate that into another essay uh, within the application. You know, they don't want to read another essay, okay, if they don't have to. So if you truly need to get something off your chest, there was nowhere to fit it, there's an opportunity for you to fit it in here. Huge gaps in work experience, obviously a way for you to address that here. Um, not using your direct supervisor as a recommender. Remember we talked about recommendations being very important. Um, Non-traditional recommenders, again, um, significant holes, how you address them. It could be holes in your community experience and your work experience, et cetera. Extenuating circumstances, um, I have them. Of course, we, we all tend to have them. So um, depending on the, on the magnitude of that circumstance, you may want to talk about it here. And then additional information from your academic background or work experience. What I would say here is, um, you know, get to the point, don't apologize, talk about the issue, address it, and move on, okay? They're not looking to read another, you know, 500 word essay. They, they want to understand and, and get context so that they don't have to make assumptions that may be incorrect. That's really what they're looking for. So, um, a little bit uh, about uh, our service option, then we'll jump into questions. I'm looking forward to that. Um, full service admissions package starts at uh, 3,600 USD. That's our comprehensive service from brand, uh, MBA branding, strategy, school selection, on into the nuts and bolts. So the essays, getting your recommenders ready, obviously important in the case of Stanford, your mock interview, your resume review. We have hourly work. We have a final review package, which is, hey, I'm done with my application, but I'd like a professional to read it. Um, so that's an opportunity for us to review your essays, for us to review your application, give you a mock interview, and uh, review your resume. That's a one-time thing, so it's not iterative like a full service admissions package. We have our DING analysis as well, um, which is you didn't get into school last year, you want to understand why. We can give you um, our assessment there and the pre-application package for those of you who are getting started early. Congratulations to you. Um, thinking about business school in kind of a six plus month time frame. Uh, really looking for ways to tighten up your story uh, and get ready for um, you know, the future business school applications. Don't forget our 10% discount with our friends at Beat the GMAT. Discount code is 3374. 3374. You can uh, sign up online. And of course, our free consultations. Many of the Beat to GMAT members uh, have taken advantage of this. If you haven't, you should do so. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to, uh, to get in front of, of one of us, talk a little bit about your story and how Admin Advantage can help you through that process. You can also join us on our blog. We have school reviews of not just Stanford, um, but other schools as well. A lot of the top MBA programs, those are rolling out on a weekly basis. And obviously our Facebook and Twitter feeds as well. So with that, uh, I'll turn it back over to Eric and we'll jump into some questions. Really looking forward to hearing from you um, and, and looking forward to answering some questions. Thanks so much, Eric. Uh, for those of you who may have joined us a little bit late, uh, we've been listening to Eric Allen, who is the co-founder of Admit Advantage, uh, who just walked us through his analysis of each of the essay questions for this year's 2012 and 2013 Stanford Graduate School of Business application essays. Uh, so now at this point, uh, Eric is gonna stick around in this um, MBA Wash comment wall um, for Stanford GSB and answer your questions live. So to ask a question for Eric, all you have to do is uh, post it on this MBA Watch comment wall page. And our, our team is actually looking at the questions coming in and we're gonna publish them one by one and uh, for the remaining hour, um, Eric and our team are going to try to get through as many of your questions live. So please stick around, ask your questions. I'm sure that you have some really good ones after seeing this great presentation. And um, all the best to everyone in their application essays this year for Stanford GSB. We'll talk to you soon.